And welcome back to this week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Metro Councilman at Large, the Democratic Operative, Jerry Maynard, and Hearn Daly on 1510 WLAC. Syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Gentlemen, nice to see you as always. Good to see you too. Let's talk about, I guess, the surprise of the week, the retirement of House Speaker Emeritus Jimmy Nafee. I said mistakenly when I was speak, interviewing uh, Governor Ramsey, he resigned. He's not resigning. He's retiring at the end of his term, but still a big surprise. Yeah, he's led us for 38 years. He was a great uh, House of Representative. He was a great leader of the Speaker of the House for 18 years. And Speaker Nafee has a tradition that he kind of he kind of led with an iron fist a little bit, and <laughs> and uh, a little different than the leadership that we see from from Beth uh, as a speaker. And so when you compare and contrast those two styles of leadership, Nafee pretty much had the trains running on time, and you didn't really have a lot of Democrats getting out of line. Mm -hmm. And so whether you think that's good or bad, it's good to compare it with Beth Beth's yeah. type of le leadership. But Nafee was very strong. He kept this government good. He was strong business. He you was know, making sure that we had a balanced budget every year. He was a great leader. Yeah, I think saying that uh, Jimmy Nafee led with a little bit of an iron fist is kind of like saying Jeremy Lin is a little bit tall. <laughs> I mean, he, he definitely ruled with an iron fist. And he and I obviously didn't see together all the time, particularly on things like the state income tax. But uh, I think he'll be missed. He's been there a long time. He has certainly been an historic figure in, in Tennessee. I think the, the redistricting and, more importantly, the growth in the suburban areas around Memphis mm -hmm. had changed his district. He was going to have an uphill battle. He admitted, and there was no not admitting it, that he was a partisan Democrat. But he also said, and I think there's some validity to this, that on issues where there could be compromise, he worked, he crossed the aisle and worked with Republicans on some issues. He got, I think yeah. that's true. He got things done. I mean, he had to because he had to work with the Republicans. If you remember, <clears throat> Wilder's leadership style and Nafee's leadership style were to work with Republicans when they were in power. Steve may disagree as to level, but he, they, they worked really hard on bipartisan. One thing I loved about Nafee, I was not in the House. Nafee knew my name. And he didn't have someone next to him saying, it's Jerry Maynard. When I came in, Nafee was like, Jerry Maynard. <laughs> and he would talk to me. I couldn't believe he would know, you know who I was. We did get along on, on our love of Big Orange and UT. So go. on that <laughs> one, we at least had common ground. Is, is this the end of an era of this kind of politician of the Ned McWhorter, the, the Jimmy Nafee, the bigger than life, the really strong leader in the, in the House chamber when they were speakers? Is it, is it changing? Is this kind of ending it, that? It, it's changing not so much on the style, but the uh, geographical location. Nafee and those guys are from West Tennessee, mm -hmm. pro-business Democrats from West Tennessee. Now you see the leadership middle and East Tennessee. And I think that's the major change that you see. You no longer have West Tennessee controlling the House and the Senate. And, and you had that with McWhorter, with Nafee, with, you know, with Wilder. I mean, you did have that kind of West Tennessee focus. I think that geographic change is, is significant. Also, I think you've seen a lot of other faces uh, stepping up and retiring this time, too. Again, part of that is redistricting. Part of it is a recognition of how the political dynamic in the state has changed. There are a lot of people leaving the legislature, which means a lot of new people coming in may not know how to work as effectively with others to get things done. And I think the other thing, you know, frankly, you're going to be seeing is that when you've got huge Republican majorities in the House and the Senate possibly growing, Republicans are going to start chopping off right. each other like we saw from our Democrat <laughs> yeah. friends for a lot yeah. of decades. Right. Here's Steve Softball. Nine Democrats are leaving office this year. Are the Democrats in trouble? You're going to have to find some new candidates to rebuild that strength that's, that's just not there right now. Well, first of all, we have to defend the seats that we currently have given the redistricting. That's number one. Number two, we have to find candidates to run for the nine seats that the Democrats are not running. I believe that we can be very competitive. Will we win all nine? No. But we have a good shot of winning seven of the nine. Like Steve said, some of these districts I believe the Democrats said, listen, I don't think I can win the seat. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's fair. But the other districts, the other seven, we can win those seats and we can hold on to them. I think a lot of it's going to depend on what happens with the national climate as well. We were talking a little bit off air that, you know, enjoy seeing these Republican candidates and, and maybe look at a picture of Barack Obama because you're not going to be seeing him this <laughs> He's fall. He's not going to, probably not. Uh, so you're going to have to see what that national climate does in terms of local races as well. I, I think the other thing is what happens in the economy, what happens in, in real local issues in a lot of these races. What's happening in Washington may not have much effect, for example, in Humboldt or in, in Hohenwald. So you've got to wait and see what happens in those districts that, that affect a race. And, and we don't know that. Let's talk about Super Tuesday. Day results. Santorum wins here in Tennessee. Really the winner of the night, Mitt Romney, wins 6 of 10, about 40, 45 percent of the delegates. And as you were saying off air, too, he's still kind of perceived as not doing so well on Super Tuesday night. Yeah, it's, it's got to be yeah. frustrating to him. I mean, you win 6 of 10 races. You've won 11 out of the last 15. You've got more delegates than everybody combined. You've got more than a million votes more than the second place guy. And everybody's talking about, well, you're struggling ahead. <laughs> now, he's not going to have a good couple of weeks. Obviously, you've got Mississippi right. and Alabama, Kansas on Saturday. 
Saturday. But then it gets a little bit better for him. You've got the Illinois, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Things get a lot better for Romney uh, real quick. And the biggest thing is he's got the money to play. Right now, Santorum and Gingrich are really scraping. They're looking in the in the car seats for loose change. The problem is, is that Romney does not have the conservative base. Romney does not have an enthusiasm going on. Romney got the same amount of votes in Tennessee this time as he got last mm -hmm. time in 2008. You don't have any enthusiasm for Romney. And what he's doing is he's getting the uh, moderate Democrats. Uh, he's getting the moderate Republicans. But he's not getting that base of support coming from the conservative base, the Tea Party people. And I believe right now that if Romney's at the top of the ticket, which I'm happy to have him, I believe that it will help us on local races, congressional races across the nation, state Senate and state House races across the nation, because you won't have that enthusiasm that you have for George W. Bush and other Republicans like Ronald Reagan. Did Trust you do me, a you're going to have conservatives that will crawl over broken glass on hot uh, asphalt to go so. vote against Barack Obama, particularly if gas prices are 4 and $5 a gallon. And keep in mind, we've got a president who sees the solution to high gas prices is not being more oil, but being more algae, more pond scum. I think that's going to mobilize conservative voters. 24 months straight of private, select, uh, private sector growth. 24 months, 227,000 jobs, private jobs added to the economy. We got Osama bin Laden. The economy's turning around. We are making sure that this economy is growing. General Motors is number one again. Automobile sales are up. Guess what we have also? Home sales are up. And so President Barack Obama has a great record we're going to run on, and I can't wait till we face Romney. Please run on that record and no, try to convince the American people that the economy is great. We've been hearing from Nancy Pelosi and Barack Obama that high unemployment rates and unemployment checks mm -hmm. are the best solution for the economy rather than paychecks. Please, let's have that battle. Super Tuesday vote here in Tennessee, the first photo ID attempt to see how it works. There were some problems, but very few. It seemed to work pretty well. Does this put to rest any need for changes? Does it need to be monitored as we go into August and November? Absolutely not. You know why? Because the demographics that were going to be affected by these changes did not come out to vote. You did not have a competitive presidential uh, campaign or a primary in the Democratic side. I saw so many older uh, people uh, <clears throat> going to get their state issued ID. We had a lot of senior citizens, Bob, who said they were not going to go. We went out and told them, please come out and vote. They said, I don't have a state issued ID. I'm not going. And so I think we'll see it in the general election. You'll see all the problems and you'll see a decrease in the number of people voting. 30 Look, seconds. If, if you're going to get on an airplane, if you're going to go buy cold medicine, if you're going to go rent a video, if you're going to go buy cold beer, you got to show a photo ID. I think they're overstating the problem. And we saw that Tuesday. Steve Gill, Jerry Mann, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.